let me tell you something. You can be living your life as a lukewarm Christian, as a lukewarm Christian, and still get some levels of miracles. There are some things you could get by faith. Remember, even the sinners that came to Jesus Christ, they got miracles. None of them went home empty-handed. All of them that came, even in their sins, they were not all righteous people. Remember Jesus Christ saying, he said, your faith has made you whole, but go and see no more. So the, uh, you can get some level of, you can have access through God's grace to some levels of miracles. You can get some healings. You can even pray, lay hand on the sick, and they could get well if they have faith. Let me tell you one thing. Even if you are a minister of God or you are a Christian, you could be living in sin. And then you pray for someone or you pray with someone who is sick. And God can heal that person, not because of your prayer, but because of the faith of that person and because the Lord honors his name. So the fact that the person got healed doesn't mean that you, your lifestyle has been approved by God. This is why a lot of people get deceived. They believe that anybody that performs miracle is a child of God. These are the very things that the devil will use to deceive mankind. Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. But for false prophets, false Christ, false teachers, they will come and they shall perform great signs and wonders. So, for what? For what? To deceive the very ones that profess the name of Christ in sincerity. To deceive them. And to deceive the gullible. But today, you, we, we, the, the people say, oh, if not, if he's not a man of God, then this person would have gotten healed. Let me tell you something. The woman with the issue of blood was not healed by Jesus Christ. I mean, the healing came from Jesus. But Jesus did not intentionally heal her. It was her faith that healed her. Not Jesus Christ. Even Jesus Christ was kind of, someone touched me. And the disciples were kind of, Master, but everybody is touching you. You might have missed on this crowd and you say someone touched me. Jesus said, he explained to them that that you left me, someone touched me. There was a kind of touch. Every I know people are thronging, people want to touch me. If today, probably want to take selfie with Jesus. Jesus Christ said, this touch is not an ordinary touch. Someone touched me. Power left me. And the woman came forward. When Jesus was insisting that someone touched me, the woman came forward and said, please, uh, it's me. I have a problem. And for 12 years, this has been my problem. But immediately, I touched you. The pool of blood dried up. Jesus didn't lay hand on the woman. He didn't. It was a woman who secretly went there with her fist and took the healing. It was her faith that healed her and not Jesus healing her consciously. It was her faith. So you can even go before a, 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 a you can be in the midst of a crowd where a false pastor, third pastor, or a false prophet is ministering and you do, you have no idea that this man is false. And then you are just Believing in God and trusting God, you can get your healing. I'm not saying that if you don't see the fruit of the Spirit, but the person is bearing false fruits of the Spirit, which is hypocrisy. I'm not saying you should go there to look for your healing because a lot of people say, oh, I'm going there, it's between me and my God. But I tell you, there are dangers. The ground... Many of these people, the ground is electrified. You could, there are churches or congregations you walk into today, and as you are entering through the door, as you are passing through the entrance, your soul, your spirit enters into a cage. So we have to be careful. I'm not trying to encourage that. But what I'm saying is that it could be false, but your faith could be genuine, and then you get healing. 